Hello, welcome to iSimSurf basic tutorial number four, working with surfaces. This tutorial will cover the most used surface creation commands. Let's start with the four point surface creation. We don't need to pick four points. We can do two, three or four. Let's pick two points from the geometry on the screen, from the upper and lower curves, for example. Middle mouse button confirms the OK and we get our first surface. Here it is. Now what if I wanted to make a higher order surface? Well, I can set the order here. Let's make it 5 by 5. And this time, let's pick four points from other geometry, from the edges of these patches, and this curve. And there we have it, a 5 by 5 order patch. Now we don't need to pick on geometry to define the points for our surface patch. I can just pick points straight off the working plane. But this time I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut for plane point, which is W. And I'm just going to push the W key here and here. And middle mouse button confirms the creation of our order 5x5 patch. There is a modify button on the four point creation command and this takes us directly to the control point modification command. It's exactly the same as the command that we get from the menu. Uh, if I just pick on the modify patch here, it takes us into control point and I just have to select the patch. And now we're ready to modify it by control points. Here I'm going to choose row and normal and this means I'm moving a control point row in a direction normal to the patch. Here's a handy tip. I can change the order of the patch by pressing 3, 4 or 5 from the keypad. It changes it directly without having to go up to the menu. You can see the U and V orders on the menu correspond to the U and V direction on the patch. Let's put that down to 4 and start looking at individual single control point modification. My direction is still set to normal so I can pick on a control point and move it in a normal direction. If I want to, I can use the middle mouse button to undo the movement and compare undo to redo. I can change the direction to tangent and this slides a control point down its tangent line. Take care to select carefully close to the control point but on the side of the tan line you wish it to move, here on the left side and here on the right. I can also make use of the delta option. This will move a control point by the specified value, in this case 10 millimeters. This means every time I click near the control point, it will move it in the normal direction by 10 mil. Here in a different view, I'm going to change from my model coordinate system to my planar coordinate system and see how it changes to X, Y and depth. So that's referring to the X and Y on the plane and the depth of the plane. So now I've locked down X and depth, the control point can only move in the Y direction. Next, making patches from curves. Now it says curves and we have some curves here, but it doesn't have to be curves. We can also use other things like uh, patch edges and face edges. So here we have four curves and I confirm with an OK and it makes a patch. We don't have to have four objects, we can even just use two curves. And this will make a simple order two between the two curves, like so, picking up the control points from those curves. Moving on to the blend command now, this allows us to make a patch by blending between two other patches. So I pick the patch edges and we have these uh, controls that we can define in the command. So we have tangent and torsion here. So if I change the quality of the connection, you can see the patch updates itself. Under the shape tab, I have refinement options like the ISO lines. I can slide the result down the ISO lines of the references. Couple links the sliders together so I can do both at the same time. This works for shape and ratio. I can also make use of the interactive green handles to drag the geometry directly. With the trim option enabled, this will automatically trim the base patches like this. Extrapolate on the other hand, lets us extrapolate those base patches just in case they weren't quite big enough when we started. Another common way to create a patch is to offset it. We simply select the patch we wish to offset, type in the number here 100 mil and press OK. As usual, undo redo is available to us to compare before and after. We can also use the plus minus button to toggle the direction. 
Now sometimes you don't know exactly how far you wish to offset the surface, but you wanted to go through a point. So we can press the point button and then pick the end point of this curve. This then calculates the distance for us and puts it into the box. So then when we press OK, that's how far it moves. Moving on to the face command now. This is how we cut back a basic four sided patch into a shape of any number of sizes using geometric limitations. First you pick your limitations and confirm with an OK on the middle mouse button and then you pick the side of the limitation you wish to keep and confirm with the OK again. We also have the both option which allows us to keep both sides of the limitation, invert is keep the opposite side and duplicate makes a duplicate of the original patch. Choosing the plane limitation option intersects the current working plane with the geometry and all you have to do is click on the side you wish to keep. Sometimes if there are gaps in our limitation, the face operation fails. We get these red markers on the geometry to indicate where the problem is. An option we have is to enable tangential extrapolation. So what that does is it automatically extends the limitations tangentially to allow the face operation to continue. We can also unface a face. This means going back to the original patch or just extracting the curves that created the face. We have these options available to us, so we pick the patch and press OK, and there we get the curves and the original patch back again. The trim command is used to reduce the size of a base patch to a limitation. Here we have a curve. The curve is projected down the normal direction, in this case, onto the patch, and that is used to reparameterize that patch so the order is kept the same. Another more accurate way of trimming is using an ISO curve. What you do is pick a point on the patch. The ISO curve blue lines are given to us and you choose the one that you wish to be the limitation. This gives us a more accurate result with no deviation between the patch and the curve. OK, here we come to a very important command, the match command. This is the command that will blend one surface to another. Now here I pulled a window over two patches. I can use the left mouse button to make a choice from the selection table. The one that I choose is going to be the one that changes. The second surface is the reference, the one that we're matching to, in this case the blue one on the left. Now you can see that I've just got position matching and partial selected. You can see a preview on the screen and if I push OK the edge of the white patch is now matched to the edge of the blue one. Uh, with the beginning and end marked by the partial. If I switch on the blend, that's going to move the whole patch, so every single control point moves itself to make that change. Now, if I want to dial in a better quality connection, I can include tangent and curvature matching, and you can see that the first, second and third control point rows have moved to give us a curvature connection. I can control what happens on the far side of our patch that we're changing by locking the position in tangent rows, that's the first and the second uh, control point rows, and they remain uh, stationary there. And now if I wish to, I can also enable things like a linearity. So this, if we look from the top view, controls the shape of the edges of the patch as they join. So without linearity and with linearity, you, uh, if I push OK, now you can see that the, they're coming in uh, normal to the internal ISO lines of the patch. Switching off partial makes the patch we're modifying stretch across the full edge of the reference patch. But if we drop down the under table here, you can see that we've got a problem. There's a 15 millimeter gap in position in G0. This is happening because the simpler order three of our patch cannot meet the more complicated order four of the reference and you can see order three here. If I push the adapt button, that will automatically change the order of my patch to match the reference. And now if I push OK, you can see we get a much better result. OK, now we have a very quick introduction to Fillet Plus, a very important part of Class A work. Under here, we have the different types of fillets. So I'm going to go for a caudal length a very popular type of fillet. I choose my first and second on my side A, side B from my model. I need to confirm the orientation of the surface normal, uh, which side is the fillet going to sit on. 
Um, other things that we have here are the uh, are we going to trim or face back the uh, the base patches with, with the fillet and we can define tangency curvature or torsion continuity we also have options to extrapolate and match the end curves of the fillet to get a nice smooth uh, blending at the end of our fillets we can choose a favorite or a variant for a type of fillet so it remembers all of these settings with the fillet so we can refer back to it later as a time saver. Advanced Fillet has nine different types of fillets available so I invite you to try them all. And now we come to the final command in this tutorial video, the flange command. Flange command creates patch or patches from a selection of edges, curves or face edges, so linear entities like these patch edges here. I confirm my selection and it generates the first uh, flange for me. I can choose a different quality standard. Standard is the highest quality. Alternative toggles between the different uh, possible directions according to the criteria here. So this is to the patch normal the angle is measured to. Uh, we can also change to a particular plane, uh, which could be a tooling direction, for example, if we had to specify a draft angle, this is where we would do it. We have these nice little interactive handles here, so I can change the length of the angle interactively and the values are updating in the dialog box, as you can see we can toggle them with the uh, the middle button on the arrow we can of course just type in the values that we want here uh, length and angle there are lots more uh, functions inside the flange command but this is just uh, just your introduction to it I hope you found this video useful and look out for more on our Katia creative design community and LinkedIn channels